try to talk about a subject on a subject that is quite difficult sometimes. Let's talk about healing. Now, healing certainly pray, uh, played a, a huge role in, in Jesus' ministry, isn't it? Um, we see multiple stories of, uh, in every gospel of Jesus healing people with leprosy, um, Jesus restoring the paralytic, uh, people with withered limbs. He even, uh, well, healed somebody without seeing them, you know, like the servant of a centurion. He, he just said that the man can go home and his servant is healed, and the guy was. We know Jesus cast demons out of people. We know he even raised somebody from the dead. So there was, there was terrific ministry with all these miracles and signs and wonders that um, Jesus had. As we find here in the book of Acts, um, and now remember this is just the beginning of the story of the church. Because in the previous chapter we really see when the first church was formed. Uh, when the day of Pentecost was there, and um, after that day, Peter's message to the crowds, and 3,000 people joined the church, so that was the beginning of it. And it was those early stages when we see this, you know, that Peter and John, well, the apostles, they continued that wonderful ministry that Jesus had. They healed the man. Now, what about healing today? And I think that is a tricky subject, isn't it? Well, because I'm sure we have different experiences here with healing. Uh, we can talk about healing on stage. And um, there are some very well-known TV preachers or, you know, the guys who fly private jets and stuff like this because God told them they have to have it. Um, they do very cool things on a stage, and uh, they'd say, they denounce a big healing event, and they'll pretty much guarantee that people will be healed. A friend of mine who's a missionary in Italy, he said this kind of guy was coming into the area, and a couple of other pastors and himself, they, they went to see it because, you know, they were, they were hearing stories even from some people in their own congregation about these miraculous healings that took place, you know, the blind could see. And I think Jesus would have been envious of those guys' ministries. And um, so they, they went there, they went to the service. And, um, and he said one of these pastors, he actually was, um, he, was he had a disability. And they, they, they tried to get onto the stage, you know, kind of to test how things would work out. There was a bunch of big bodyguards standing around there and making sure it's, you know, those random people with disabilities or other issues, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be nowhere near the stage. And those people who came up, they were very healthy people who uh, needed to act out and be healed at the right moment and, you know, and then celebrate the goodness of God and, and ask for donations, second or third or fourth time, you know. Um, so, we can see healings like that. Now, that's not what the gospel is talking about, isn't it? And that's not what the church is willing to or should be preaching. You know, it's, it's, it's great to be able to, to see a miracle. And sometimes we're very tempted to do that. Um, we were once in a church where the pastor was preaching and then he said, you know, I sense there is somebody here with a sore throat and God tells me to, you know, to pray for you. Would you like to come forward? And, and I have a guy sitting next to me and he's like, well, it's, we're in Scotland in the middle of winter. <laughs> Half of the congregation have sore throats. So if God tells you there is somebody in there with a sore throat, why wouldn't he point a finger at which, who, you know, who, who exactly? is there so that you'd go to them and pray for them rather than have them to come out. I mean, we can use some of those little tricks and it sometimes works and it, it looks cool, but that's not the sort of healing that we see in the New Testament. So what sort of ministry do we see happen there? 
Well, we see a, um, a man who couldn't walk, a man with a disability. Now, today, we, we actually have a much healthier world in a sense that we try to build uh, the environment where everyone can be included. You know, somebody who cannot walk today, you, you know, there's great engineering work done into building decent, like, wheelchairs and, you know, and, and various, and, and lifts that we can have accessible buildings and, and we have no barriers as you travel around the city. And the buses, if you need to use them, they have this, you know, platforms that pull out. This is incredibly cool. Um, I went with David to uh, visit Audrey uh, at the hospital a week ago, and I nearly got into a very uncomfortable situation because there was a gentleman there with a prosthetic leg, and it was one of those bionic limbs, you know, which, which looks really cool. It looks like a Terminator thing. And, and I saw this guy walking, and I nearly said, hey, this is really cool. And then I thought, no, it's not, because, I mean, he lost his leg. <laughs> Nevertheless, that thing, the, 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 the ingenuity that comes into manufacturing those things, they're terrific. A, a good friend of ours, she lost, um, she lost her arm and her shoulder due to a very aggressive form of cancer. And, and now she's been having a, that whole part of your body built up that she'll be able to use. And, you know, she has a little child and she'll be able to feed him with her own arm. Well, a new, I don't know, made of Titan or whatever. This is incredible. This is what the society now is doing to, to help facilitate uh, that everyone could be the same. You know, you, you go into a store and you find somebody with, you know, a certain type of disability serving customers, you know, doing this great job. And, and in no way they're feeling that they're excluded. Now, that was very different 2,000 years ago. If you had a disability, hey, you were cursed. And it means that God was really unhappy with you, and God was really unhappy with your family, and that was very embarrassing. And the best you could hope for was to have some good friends who could take you to the temple gates or to the city gates and stick you there so that you could beg for money. And, this, you know, and, and, and those little donations that people will leave you, that would feed you. That wasn't great. There was in no way, well, decent way of life. And it wasn't just about the disability. It was if you were blind, that was pretty bad. If you had leprosy, that was even worse because then you'd be sent out of the town. You wouldn't be able to hang out with people. You should be walking along the street somewhere outside. And, and if you see somebody approaching, you'd have to scream out loud that you were unclean so that you know, people could stay away from you. And that was... That was pretty bad. You were well aware of it. So what healing meant then? Was it just about strengthening your legs? That you could jump like this gentleman did? He jumped and walked and ran. He enjoyed something he could never do. Or was it about just opening the eyes of a blind person so that they could see and, and enjoy that. Was it just that? Or was it about restoring that person into a community? Was it about helping them to find or re find, discover the role they can play, something that they were deprived of? So when Jesus was healing people, when the disciples were healing somebody, it wasn't just about, okay, now you could, you could do something, you could work. No, you could be part of this fellowship and you don't feel to sh feel you, you don't need to feel excluded embarrassed or ashamed because you are just like everyone else just as good as everyone else do healings do healings happen today do we see it in our lives I mean, what do we class as healing, as something that we would be willing to share? And you know what? I'll have a microphone here. And if somebody wants to come and share a story, um, feel free to do that. Anybody? What sort of healing 
Or have you ever observed a healing? Have you experienced a healing? Or have you observed something that you could say, well, there you go, it was a healing. I can give you a mic there. I, um, I, the first thing that came to my mind was the um, prisoner who we saw on the video at Alpha last week. If that's not a miracle, I don't know what it is, a, a healing. He, he wasn't um, sick in a physical way, but he was very sick in a spiritual way. And if a person can have a complete change in heart, complete change in their life, that, that is absolutely a healing. So that would be one example. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Well, I'm sure you can share something. Hi, I used to require um, an operation on my ears every year um, from when I was about four or five. Um, grace of God, I no longer require operations. I've been healed. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? No? Your English is okay, don't worry. Seriously. No. But seriously, you speak like you do. Don't worry. You, you'll be fine. Okay. Uh, my oldest daughter, she was a member of here for, for 94, 96 as our family. Uh, when she got married, she had something in his... Uh, ovarios, I don't know the name, uh, she could not get pregnant. Maybe she did some treatments, and then we are very believe in God, and we pray for her. And the, three months after we did that, and the, if I know my God, we don't need to keep praying, 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 because he lives one time. And if you pray and keep in your faith, and she has already four kids. This is great. Her name is Deborah. Oh, thank you. Any other stories? See? When Elizabeth was born uh, with, you know, a lot of cranial nerve damage, we prayed for that to be healed. We, we prayed for her to be healed. There were a lot of issues we didn't know. And although God didn't change those physical things, we often make the comment in our house that we don't know anybody who's more whole because she's just so content and trusting in God. So, yes, he has healed her. Great. Thank you. You know, if anybody wants to interrupt me and share another story, feel free to do that. I'd be very happy for it, seriously. Um, this is the thing with healing. We, we often read something that is, that is supernatural. We read about, you know, a man who couldn't walk for, for most of his life, and suddenly he's able to jump and walk and, you know, and run, and we're kind of thinking, wow, look at that. And we think about Jesus walking down the street and meeting somebody with leprosy and, and saying, go show yourself to a priest, you, you healed. And the person goes and they're clean. And we're thinking, this is amazing. We don't see anything like this happening around us. And then we look into our lives and the lives of our friends and we I guess sometimes we're just afraid to ask a question because we're afraid to hear that no nothing happens because if nothing happens then then somehow this book loses its credibility because 
We don't see these massive healings now around us, and we can't just come to somebody and lay our hands and say, well, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. We may kind of lack that sort of faith, and, you know, and, and we, 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 there's always that, what if? What if I do that and it doesn't happen? What if I tell people that God heals people, and in response I hear a, a devastating story of somebody having a, a, a family member lost to cancer despite all the prayers and, you know, and petitions and, and hours of prayers, and we're then feeling quite uneasy about it because that's the territory which is very sensitive and very... And it almost feels like it's almost black and white because it's either you have it or you don't. If you have it, then, hey, that's there's miracles, and we're saying, we, well, we don't really see it too often. And, and more often we'd say, no, we don't. Well, why do we preach about it? But if we ask ourselves a question, if we look into that and we, we hear stories like we just heard, you know, now, is it not a miracle? And interestingly, if you ask your friends, you probably pick up quite a lot of miraculous story. I remember my dad shared a, you know, a little story with me. He said he, he was studying in, in, in uh, Louisville, in Kentucky. And he said they were in a church there once. And, and somebody said, hey, you know, I'd like us to pray for this little boy. And this was this little boy, severely disabled, couldn't talk, couldn't walk. He was eight years old. And, you know, my dad said, well, they all gathered to pray for him. And he was like... Guys, what are we praying for? We, we, we know miracles don't happen almost. And he said, nevertheless, they all prayed there. And, um, and somebody really prayed for this boy to survive another year. A couple of years later, he talked to somebody from that church and said, Hey, by the way, remember we prayed for this little boy. How's he doing? And the guy said, Oh, yeah, he's going to school now. He's, he's all fine. My dad felt, well... You know, this isn't something he believed in when he prayed there with these people. And God does it. You'll hear stories of people who were cured of cancer. And I can, I can, I can share a story like this coming from my family. But equally, we hear stories when people weren't. And we hear stories when things didn't shape up exactly as we wanted it. But we know God heals people. And sometimes His healing is a bigger healing than what we want to see. Or we're prepared to see. You know, we don't go around and just pray for people and say, Hey, oh, you've got leprosy. Let me just pray for you. God, would you please heal this person? And the person jumps out clean. No. But instead, the church was focusing its effort on eradicating leprosy. And in, in various places in the world, there were hospitals built and treatment programs organized. And leprosy has been cured. We, we don't just come to somebody who is in a wheelchair and say, Hey, you know, in the name of Jesus, just jump up and pray. No, but instead, God wants to reshape our understanding of their needs. And, and how we care for people with various issues so that they don't feel excluded. Because, well, the healing comes in, first of all into bringing the person into the fellowship, helping them to sense that they are part of the peoplehood of God. There's a bigger healing than we sometimes would like to see because that sort of healing is challenging because God wants us to be involved with these people. God doesn't want us to just make it a one-off prayer and send somebody away because, you know, I can pray for somebody and I can tell them to go and I don't really need to know about them because they're healed. I've done my job. But notice what Peter does here. He prays for the man. And the man jumps up. And what happens next? Well, next there is this whole... Well, if you read from verse 11 until the end of the chapter... There is another proclamation of the good news. And there's an invitation for people to join in with the church. And that proclamation becomes costly because after that, Peter and John are arrested. Right? So they're willing to pay the price to be able to bring that bigger healing to the, to the people around them. They're willing to be engaged. They're willing to be not to be detached. And that may cost you dear. And that's what we often aren't prepared to do. 
We'd like to maybe give somebody a bit of money. We'd like to pat somebody on the back and say, hey, I'll pray for you. We'd like to do something that wouldn't attach us to the person. And Jesus said, hey, that wouldn't work. You guys need to be part of this new peoplehood of God. That's the church. He wants to draw us in. He wants to make us, make us one. He wants to make us aware of the needs and weaknesses and struggles of our sisters and brothers. And He wants to enable us to respond to that with a word of encouragement, with a healing touch, with our presence in their life. Because you know what? It's not just those people who sit by their gates and begging they need healing. We need healing just as much. And sometimes we, who think of ourselves as strong, as able-bodied, as powerful, as rich, we need healing more than those people that we can point our finger and say, hey, I wish God helped them. We need to seek God's help. And we need to be thankful when God reaches out to us, heals us, restores us, and gives us opportunities to bring healing to others. That's what happened with the disciples. They were blind. They were fighting over power. They received the Holy Spirit. They were healed. They found the purpose for their life. They went on to bring healing to others. And other people were invited to do the same. We are the disciples. We were perhaps those crippled beggars. And God wants to restore us. And I think now as we celebrate in Thanksgiving, this is something we need to be aware of. That the healing that God brings is not a one-off thing. It's the process. It's a process that takes our whole life. And you know, in some of the place, Paul says, well, for us who are being saved, we are being saved. We are the people on the way of salvation. You know, salvation that is not just about, you'll, you'll be in heaven when you die. Remember the story when Jesus healed a man who was brought to him, the paralyzed man. And Jesus came to this person and he said, your sins are forgiven. And straight away there were people who said, Huh? Who is he who can forgive sins? And I love what Jesus did then. He said, what is easier, to say your sins are forgiven? Or to say, stand up, take your mat, and walk? Now, what is easier for us to say, we'll pray for you. Your God will forgive your sins, and when you die, you'll get to heaven. You'll get into eternal bliss. Or to say, come stay with me. And I'll share my meal with you, and I'll share my time with you, and I'll share my coat with you, and I'd like to invite you into my house. And then Jesus says, well, so that you know that Jesus can forgive sins, I'm telling this man, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And he did. And I think this was really cool. Because... Jesus points to us that the healing isn't about what you see. Healing is required for us inside. And God wants to do that. He continues to do that. Because He said He'll never leave us. And that's what we're thankful for today. That's what we celebrate. That's what we pray for. And that's what we need to take with us as we go out to share God's healing with the world. Let us bow our heads. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful healing that we have. A healing that continues. A healing that should overflow from our lives into the lives of people around. And Lord, thank you for bringing us into that 
church of yours where we can experience something wonderful. We can find the purpose and the meaning for our lives. We can find healing that we can take to our neighbors, friends. We can take the world around. Lord, continue to work in our lives. Continue to restore us and build us up so that we could be part of this wonderful project of yours, of building your kingdom. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.